Statistics. Today's video is about another spreadsheet that uh, we have in our website. You can download this spreadsheet in the link description. Um, so the main, the main idea about the spreadsheet is to calculate the sound pressure level inside the room, taking, taking into consideration the, reverb the reverberation time. Uh, the spreadsheet is pretty straightforward. There's also some extras that I'm, I want to explain. But first, let's um, start with the um, input cells of the spreadsheet. So you need to place the, the room information. So for instance, I'm, I'm going to create a, a large room. So 30 meters, 20 meters, 10 meters. Um, this spreadsheet only works for the metric system you need to um, convert your impure, imperial units to the metric system to use the spreadsheet. So this is, these are the dimensions of the room. Then, of course, then we can have the reverberation of the room. Uh, let's say five seconds, no, seven seconds, okay? So this is a highly uh, re reverberant room. Then we are going to include the sound power level, 120 decibels, and the number of, so let's put 100, 100, and the number of sound sources. So let's say we have four sound sources, okay? Um, so as you can see, um, where is the, let me think, okay. So this value here, LW total, it's the total sound power level so if I use uh, one, so one sound source, you have 100 dBs. If I have two sound sources, 103. Uh, if I have 10 sound sources, 110 decibels of sound power level. Um, then we need to uh, actually define the characteristics of the derivative of the sound source. So one means that the sound source is, is, is omnidirectional, two is uh, half omnidirectional, and of course we can increase the directivity of the, of the um, sound, sound source. For instance, if we are dealing with a megaphone, maybe this value is going to be 30 and not, uh, not one, okay? Uh, but just, let's just leave this, let's just consider that the, all the sound sources are omnidirectional. This is the uh, directivity index that you, you, must, you must not change this value uh, because it, it actually uh, is calculated based on the directivity. So this directivity index is going to be used in our uh, sound pressure level prediction with the reverb. Then we have all this information over here, room factor, distance, I'm not going to go into detail. And then we have this two um, calculations. One is for the sound pressure level without reverb. So this is basically a free field calculation. And then we have the sound pressure level with reverb. Okay, and, and you can see you can see that the values are very different. Initially they are somewhat, somewhat closer because the direct sound is quite strong. But since we have like seven seconds of reverberation time, uh, starting from uh, 5 to 10 meters, the sound pressure level is basically, basically the same, considering the reverb, because the re reverberant field is sustaining the sound. If we're going into a free field um, approach, so, so placing the sound sources in the, on the outdoors, then we, de we would have these values over here. Um, of course, uh, we can see this graphically. So here's the our uh, green line. It's the sound pressure level with a reverberant field, and uh, the red is the sound pressure level with without the reverberant field. Now uh, this curve seems a bit awkward because it should be kind of a straight line, but it isn't a straight line because the, the, my input data over here, considering the distance is not, 
is not linear. So uh, basically I put one, two, three, four, five meters. Then I change to 10 meters, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So this is, this is not a linear um, scale. So, uh, so that's the reason why this, this red line is a bit st strange. But mainly my point is that, as you can see, uh, the reverberation time um, is completely, uh, the, the reverberation time changed drastically the sound pressure level inside the room when compared to a free field approach. If I come back to our initial spreadsheet and I change this, for instance, let's say that I change this to one second, then uh, there must be an error in, here in the in the sound pressure level because it's. I, mean, I know what error is. This is this because the distance is, is much wider than the room itself. So we are just going to use this part over here. So as you can see, if the reverb goes down, our sound pressure level approaches the direct field. Okay. Now let's go back to seven seconds again. Uh, I know the, the spreadsheet is not perfect, but I know it, it is what it is. So it just just for you to give an idea. For instance, if we change the directivity, let's say we and like we change this to 30. Now let's do like 10. 10. Uh, it didn't change much. Let me do another approach. Uh, let's say three seconds, directivity one. So three seconds zero activity one, we have this kind of uh, um, of sound pressure level, and uh, well, for instance, at ten meters we have like ninety one decibels. Now, if we change the reactivity, uh, this is obviously wrong um, because the the, the the values don't make sense. That's the problem with these formulas because we have to be really, car really careful. Because you really need you need to make sure you need to be aware that some of these formula formulas actually can give you wrong numbers. Um, let's put ten or five maybe. Okay, five. Okay, so going back to our discussion, directivity Q value one omnidirectional sound source. The um, at ten meters the value is, is ninety one decibels. If I change this to five, so I'm increasing the directivity, then it mean, when I increase the directivity, our my reverberation field loses power because I'm not I'm not um, emitting sound in all directions, and then and therefore the sound pressure level will be higher when compared to an omnidirectional source sound source. So that's basically it. So this is very kind of very, very straightforward. Then I've, I've made some other calculations over here. Um, I calculated the critical distance. So this is, I actually found two formulas to calculate this, uh, this, um, this parameter and, and, they, and they actually give different values. But of course the critical distance is basically the distance from the sound source where the reverberation field is the same as the direct sound. And um, I've got these two formulas over here. Of course, if I, let's say, if I increase the reverberation time, let's go back again to seven seconds, uh, it's going to decrease the distance, okay? Because the since I'm increasing the reverberation time, it, 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 I have a stronger effect in the room, and then I have to be closer to the sound source to get to the critical, to critical distance. If I decrease the reverberation time, let's, so get, let's go back to two seconds, then the critical distance has increased. And of course, when I'm doing the design of a room, or for instance, of a concert hall, I need to be aware of all this information. I need to be aware of where is the critical distance, what are the surfaces that are closer to, our, to the stage or or to the first rows of the um, of our, of our uh, audience area, so everything is important in acoustics. Now I have a, a, and I have other additional information that I place in the spreadsheet. This is the sound pressure level at critical distance. Uh, this value might 
probably wrong be, be wrong because uh, let me see yeah it's, cha it's, it's changing but the value is probably wrong um like i said that's the problem with having too many too many formulas coming from different textbooks and they all give different approaches uh for basically the same problem it's not that a formula is wrong it's that the the prediction method on, on this formula and probably on this formulas over here, they, they are different, and so they give different results. So you always you always need to be aware that we are do, dealing with predictions that, and each prediction may have some kind of uncertainty. Um, as I was saying, if you increase the variation time, the distance is going to be further, further, and um, Sorry, the distance is going to be shorter and the sound pressure level is going to be higher. Okay, that makes sense. Now, to end, uh, sorry about my mess. Now, to end um, the spreadsheet, I have included also a couple of formulas for the cocktail party effect. So, the cocktail party effect is something that is very, um, very experienced in. Uh, offices and restaurants you know, when we have group of of, of 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 aggregated people and we have one group one group for instance as five persons the other group has three the other group has four and then uh, what happens is that the, the if the room is not treated acoustically each room each group of persons starts to increase their speech volume in, in order for them to understand uh, so the reverberation time is so high in some places that for that it's instinctively people start to increase their voice level in order to be to be understood. And this form over here, it basically uh, allows you to define the distance between the listeners. So let's say that in you in our room. We have a bunch of group of people that have that I have uh, that are separated by ten meters. Okay. Okay. This. Uh, so what? What? So what? This calculates it's the maximum. It's the maximum number of speaker of persons or speakers per group in order for the for the speech to be perceptible. So if we change this to five, oh, it didn't change that much. Let's change this to dawn. Okay, uh, let me change the, the reverberation time for something a bit, a bit uh, uh, lower because. Uh, seven seconds is a long time so we're going to put three seconds and now it makes a bit more sense so if our group of listeners is um, separated by one meter the maximum number of persons inside each group would be eight if i increase this so if i increase the distance between between the the, between the, the the groups then we need to have less people talking in order for the speech to be perceptible that makes sense because if people are close if we have different groups that are close to each other the reverberation field doesn't impact them so much but once we start to separating the groups then we must have less persons inside each one of the groups so that the sound sound uh, power level of each group is not very high in order to not uh, um, denigrate the speech intelligibility. Uh, this is a bit too confusing, I know, but I know this is just classical acoustic formulas, formulas that you can use. Um, so I don't think I have much more to say. So just keep aware that this is a very experimental spreadsheet you may contain you may contain some errors so even uh, I may I may uh, have uh, um, uh, 
made some error in the spreadsheet or maybe the textbooks where I have taken the equations to build this spreadsheet, spreadsheet are no longer valid or they are old formulas that are not um, that are no longer effective so please take that into consideration and uh, so that's the video for now uh, and thank you for watching and please, please subscribe for further uh, updates thank you so much